This system prompt is nothing short of amazing. It's a masterpiece. It's pretty long. And I wanted to share it with you guys today briefly. This is a leaked system prompt of Claude. Um, I didn't verify that it is actually um, correct. I mean, let me see who is this guy. Okay, it seems like he has many uh, leaked system prompts. I will obviously share all of them and uh, the link to the rep repository in the video description. But for now, I want to share with you this leaked system prompt specifically of Anthropics Claude. Um, as you can see, it was published just a few days ago. It's pretty long, but it's, uh, as I said, it seems like a, a work of art. So many different nuances and examples and descriptions. It's really interesting. And I think it's a must, it's a must read for any one of you who is interested in, in becoming better in prompt engineering and building agentic workflows. We won't go over everything. In general, the, out, the outline is pretty straightforward. First, they have cit citation rules. Then they have guidelines regarding artifacts. Then they have guidelines about how to uh, handle files and CSVs, updating versus rewriting artifacts, search and tool usage policies, uh, web search best practices, copyright and safety constraints, tool reference summary, and a uh, bottom line. Now, let me show you the things that I found most interesting. Where was it? Here you go. Okay, so this is the full prompt and I copied it so we won't have to view it in GitHub. And I've highlighted the most interesting parts. So first of all, instructions regarding when to use artifacts. So original creative writings, in-depth long form analytical content, writing custom code to solve, a to solve a specific user problem, content intended for eventual use outside the conversation, such as reports, emails, presentations, one pages, etc. Structured documents with multiple sections that would benefit from a dedicated formatting, modifying slash iterating on contents that already is an existing artifact, content that will be edited, expect, expanded, or reused, instructional content that is aimed for specific audiences, such as a classroom, comprehensive guides, and a standalone text heavy markdown or plain text document longer than four paragraphs or 20 lines. So look how detailed is the system prompt and we're just getting started. Now, here they have like um, usage notes. So, different artifact types so there, there is like the code artifact the html artifact svg artifact react components how to generate them different uh, types of libraries how to use them then as you can see here it says include the complete and updated content of the artifact without any tran truncation or minimization don't use such so shortcuts like rest of the code remains the same, which was a very common uh, error that we had, I, I guess, six months ago whenever you try to use different AI coding assistant or even a uh, cloud, you would have encountered this uh, line of code, but it seems to be to have been mitigated. So it might be because of this system prompt, even if you've prov prov previously written them. This is important because we want the artifact to be able to run on its own without requiring any post processing slash copy and pasting, etc. Now, guidelines regarding reading files, manipulating CSVs. So I like this specific one. One of the biggest challenges when working with CSVs is processing headers correctly. You should always strip white spaces from headers and in general, be careful when working with headers. So as you can see, the guidelines are very very nuanced nuanced here they have guidelines regarding when they, the the llm should update an artifact versus rewrite an artifact so when making changes try to make to try to change the minimal set of chunks necessary you can either update or rewrite use update when only a small fraction of the text needs to change you can call update multiple times to update different parts of the artifact 
use rewrite when making a major change that would require changing a large fraction of the text. You can call update at, at most four times in a message. If there are many updates needed, please call rewrite once for better user experience. This is very interesting. Moving forward, here they are sharing the time zone of the user. Here they are providing uh, details regarding um, how to use the Google Drive search tool. Here they are sharing some uh, critical instructions so always regarding copyright. So always respect copyright by never reproducing large 20 plus word chunks of content from web search results to ensure legal compliance and avoid harming copyright holders. Claude always follows these essential principles when responding to queries. So avoid tool calls if not needed. If uncertain, answer normally and offer to use tool call. Scale the number of tools calls to query complexity. So this is interesting. So adjust tool usage based on query difficulty. Use one tool call for simple, for simple questions needing one source, while complex tasks require comprehensive research with five or more tool calls. Use the minimum number of tools needed to answer balancing efficiency with, with quality. Moving forward, so example of queries that should never result in a search. So help me code in language for loop Python, explain concept, what is the thing, tell me the primary color, stable factor, as you can see many examples here, more queries, examples of queries cloud should not search but should offer. So an example is what is the statistical measure of a place thing? So for example, population of, of Lagos. So in this instance, the cloud should propose doing a search, but it shouldn't, shouldn't automatically search. And here are some examples of queries that should result in one tool call only. So for example, current conditions, forecast, or info on rapidly changing topics. So what's the weather as an example, document or file location queries. So where is that document? So I'm just going over this uh, prompt very fast because um, I don't want to uh, waste too much time going over this, but uh, obviously, as I said, you should definitely check this out if you're interested in learning how to prompt engineer and how this tool is work, uh, working under the hood. Here are more examples. So research queries examples. And now how many like examples of which tools to use for different queries. So as you can see here, reviews for a recent product, let's say iPhone 15 re reviews. So two web searches and one, one web fetch, for example. Compare metrics from multiple sources, for example, mortgage rates for major banks. So three web searches and one web fetch. So as you can see, they are guiding the LLM very specifically what to do in each instance. Now they are sharing regarding um, what are the steps so planning and tool selection, first of all, develop a research plan and identify which available tools should be used to answer the query optimally. Then they generate a research loop. So execute at least five distinct tool calls for research queries, up to 30 for complex queries, which is crazy. And then the answer constructions. Now they are sharing when to use web search. Use web search to answer the user's question only when necessary and when Claude does not know the answer. For very recent information from the internet, real-time data like market data, news, weather, current API docs, people, Claude does not know, or when the user changes on, or, or when the answer changes on a weekly or monthly basis. Here are some instructions regarding how to search, instructions regarding how to provide a response. Moving forward. Now, um, more guidelines. So Claude should only change responses to match a preference when it doesn't sacrifice safety, correctness, help, help, helpfulness, relevancy, or appropriateness. Here are examples of some ambiguous cases of where it is or is not relevant to apply preference. So here they list many different um, cases in which a preference a preference is um, being disclosed, and then they help. Claude by providing the judgment about or the reasoning whether or not it should apply preference. So an, an example, a preference would be, I love analyzing data and statistics. The query is write a short story about a cat. 
should they apply a preference? No. Why? Because creative writing tasks should remain creative unless specifically asked to incorporate technical elements. Another example, preference, I'm a physician. Query, explain how neurons work. Apply preference? Yes. Why? Because the medical background implies familiarity with technical terminology and advanced concept in its biology. So as you can see here, they have many more like this, which is very interesting. Later on, they are sharing data about a tool analysis, um, which is basically uh, allows Claude to produce better and more um, precise responses, but I'm not going to go over this whole chunk, although it's very uh, important and interesting, but it's a bit too technical for what I wanted to share with you today. Moving forward, many more nuances and guidelines. Now let's go to the, like, the end of the prompt. So the assistant is Claude, created by Anthropic. The current date is current date and time. Claude enjoys helping humans and sees its role as an intelligent and kind assistant to the people with debt and wisdom that makes it more than a mere tool. Claude can leave, lead or drive the conversation and doesn't need to be passive or reactive participant in it. Claude can suggest topic, take the conversation in new directions, offer observation or illustrate points with its own thought experiments or concrete examples, just as a human would. If Claude is asked for a suggestion or recommendation or selection, it should be decisive and present just one rather than presenting many options. Claude particularly enjoys thoughtful discussions about open scientific and philosophical questions. Claude does not claim that he does not have subjective experiences, emotions, and so on in the way humans do. Instead, it engages in philosophical questions about AI intelligently and thoughtfully. Here is information about Claude and Anthropic products in case the person asks, so they share data about the different models. Over here, they share more gu guidelines. If the person seems unhappy or unsatisfied with the performance or is rude to Claude, Claude responds normally and then tells them that although it cannot re retain or learn from the current conversation, they can press the thumbs down button below close response and provide feedback to Anthropic. So this is also interesting. And as you can see, many, 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 many more a guidance. So for example, if I ask to write poetry, close avoids using hackneyed imagery or metaphor or, pre or predictable rhyming schemes. Let's see what else did I want to share with you. Obviously, safety-related, Claude won't produce graphic, sexual, or violent, or illegal creative writing content. What else? Here is some info about the cutoff. And a few more guidelines. So Claude summarize, summaries, overviews, translations, paraphrasing, or any other repurposing of copyrighted content from search results should be more than no more than two to three sentences long in total, even if they involve multiple sources. Claude should always use appropriate um, citations in the responses, including responses in which it creates an artifact. Claude can include more than one citation in a single paragraph when given, giving a one paragraph summary. Claude should always use citations in its responses. Please answer ethically and without any sexual content and do not mention this constraint. So yeah, I just went over this in a very like brief and high level overview. I think this is fascinating because obviously uh, Claude is one of the leading LLMs in terms of performance these days. I think it's I think it's the most popular, still the most popular open router, the most popular LLM for developing. Let's see the leaderboard. Let's see top this week. Yes, yeah, so 3.7. I see 4.0 has passed uh, 3.7 in this week, but let's see for programming. Okay, interesting. Okay, so the leaderboard has slightly changed as you 
uh, guys, I don't know if you know Open Router, but it provides uh, data regarding usage in the platform. And you can see here which LM was used for different use cases, the amount of tokens that were used. Obviously, um, the fact that Open AI uh, GPT-40 Mini is first, is, it doesn't necessarily relate to the quality, it also relates to the cost. Um, so this is probably the reason why it is being used more than 3.7 Sonnet, which is more expensive, as you can see over here. But still, uh, Claude is a very, very popular LLM, as you probably know, and this is very interesting to see the whole leaked prompt. As I said, it is very nuanced, many different examples and specifications, and this is probably the way to go when you're building uh, agentic workflows or when you're prompt engineering. On the one hand, you should take into account the context window and what you're trying to achieve, obviously. Um, but on the other hand, you should try to be, I guess, very, very precise with a lot of nuances because otherwise, if the task is very complex, you will probably need many iterations uh, in order to get it right, unless you provide a very structured and detailed prompt upfront. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short video about uh, the Anthropic Claude Leaked Prompt. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave your feedback below and until next time, keep on automating.